Why is it important for us to be led by the Holy Spirit? Why is it important for us to have discernment as well? You see, there's things in the spiritual realm going on that we can't always see with the human eye. We can't always see with the naked eye either. So that's why we need to be guided by the Holy Spirit and led by the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me read you this Bible verse. Uh, it's actually a section. It's the last the final instructions and greetings from Paul in Romans 16. Verse 17, I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them, for such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites, and by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the naive. In this world that we live in, charisma or riz or uh, people being smooth talking or good looking get elevated in life not even just in a Christian sense, in life in general, beautiful people get promoted quickly. Beautiful women get gifts and things bought for them. Men get things bought for them. It's, it's just the way that we do in life. Now, if you're well versed and you can speak, you got good vocabulary and you can put sentences together, you can swoon people like that. You can make a point and build a following quickly just because you put yourself out there in a well-presented manner. This can be abused. And it often is abused, especially by people in the church. Um, there's people out there that are not following the Lord for anything uh, positive. There's people out there that have huge, large churches that are not following the Lord for following the Lord's sake. They're following the Lord and they're lining their pockets, which at the end of the day, the Lord would deal with them. But in our walk with the Lord, we have the Holy Spirit. Now, some of you guys don't believe in the gifts of the spirit. Some of you guys don't believe that the Holy Spirit is active and alive. That's fine. That's it's. I think it's more of a secondary issue and it's not salvific, but I do think there is a thing as grieving the Holy Spirit because the Bible says so. And I do think that the Holy Spirit is just as alive and just as, as active today as he's always been. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is living within us. Now, I don't mean that we have the same ability and the same power that the apostles had. I, I don't. I for sure don't. You know, so I, I don't know about all that stuff. But what I do know is that I've seen the Holy Spirit move in my life and move in front of me, move in my church. I go to a pretty big church. We got like 3000 members and I see the spirit in there all the time. Um, let the spirit guide you guys, because there are going to be false teachers that come up. They're going to say. Uh, things or have doctrine that goes against what the biblical teachings are. And there's many reasons that they do this. They do this because they uh, have they have selfish desires. And I don't just mean monetary gain. I mean like lifestyle choices that they choose to want to have. Look at, look at Mormonism with polygamy. They want to have multiple women in their lives. So they make it okay to sleep with more or to have more than one wife. Uh, same thing with um, Muslims. They can have more than one wife. And they don't even really honor their women. That's, that's just the way their doctrine is. Um, and so when it comes down to these things, we have to let the Holy Spirit guide us and give us discernment and give us wisdom that comes from reading the Bible. The word of God is true. It's living and it's breathing. Every time you read the Bible, you will receive something new. You may not get full-blown revelation, but something will become clear to you in the time that you read it. And a lot of the times when I read the Bible, it applies to a situation that I'm going through differently than the time that I read it before. And so that's how you know the word of God is living. It's active. It, it never changes, but it's always applying and hitting different whenever I need it to. And that's why I think that we need to be alert and of sober mind like the, like the Bible says. Because if we're out here just looking at someone for their looks or their leadership qualities, we start to worship that leader instead of worshiping the one that leads, which is Jesus. We need to be uh, sober in mind and judgment, not getting caught up in a person's ability to lead us or their ability to speak or their ability to uh, put on a presentation. Churches become a, about entertainment a lot. Birds going at it. Churches become about entertaining one uh, instead of spreading the good news. Now, there's a place and a time for that, especially, you know, with, with the worship music. They're more like concerts now, which don't get me wrong. I love worship music. I love my church band. I love it all. But at the same time, 
I don't want us to just get blinded by the festivities of it all. I want us to be able to go in and the Bible tells us to go in and, you know, worship full heartedly. But we're also here to to serve the Lord and listen to the word of Jesus, the word about Jesus, the word of God, instead of going to, oh, I'm going to go listen to my pastor talk. You know what I mean? We're going there to worship Jesus. This time has been set apart for the Lord. The leaders have been given to us by the Lord, you know, so find a leader uh, that loves the Lord more than you do, or, you know, at least that you feel loves the Lord more than you do. So that way, as you imitate these leaders that are imitating Christ, you can also be an imitator of Christ and your love for the Lord can grow. You're not going to love the Lord more now than you do two years from now. And the only way that you can continue to grow to love the Lord is by reading his word, praying to him, spending time with him, asking the Holy Spirit to guide you, to soften your heart, to uh, carve and chip away the things, any chinks in the armor, any rough edges on the statue, sand those away. You know, that's what the Holy Spirit's doing to us. It's helping us along on this process of sanctification. And we're becoming the, the creation that God always knew that we were. Even when we're a block of, a block of stone, a block of marble, you know, that sculpture that we're created into, that doesn't take, you know, one day to build. It takes a while to build a statue. Uh, and so at the end of the day, I just really want you guys to understand that there's going to be someone out there that doesn't have your best interest in mind. And unfortunately, that's just the reality of the world. You know, the fox is sly. He's cunning. He's slick. But he wants to eat your chickens. So <laughs> keep the fox out of your out of your yard. You know, and uh, that's that, it's a silly analogy, but it's true. How many times have you had someone that, you know, came saying that they were your friend and they snaked you? You know, you gave somebody some money. They never paid you back. Uh, a boyfriend cheated on you. A girlfriend cheated on you. And they told you that they love you. It's just the way of the world. You know what I mean? But those that are in Christ Jesus, they have discernment. They have the, the Holy Spirit to be their helper. The Bible says that we were sent the Holy Spirit as a helper. So really let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Don't ignore the Holy Spirit. He is a person. He's the third person of the Trinity. Um, he's within us. You have the helper inside you. Don't don't ignore it. That little small voice that you hear speaking to you when you're getting ready to do something dumb, that's the Holy Spirit. The That voice that you hear when you do something that turns out really great and you're like, wow, I don't know where that came from. That's the Holy Spirit. Anytime you have that nudging, that consciousness that you think is just your uh, whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of names for what people think uh, it is, but it's truly the Holy Spirit. Some of you might have a demon. Uh, if you guys practice witchcraft or anything like that, and you think you're tapping into your consciousness, no, that's a demon. Listen to this. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit will guide you. He'll never lead you astray. He's always going to point you to Christ. If it's God, it'll grow. If it's not, it'll go. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Always point you towards Christ. Never away from Christ. Never a division of the church, never to cause strife amongst fellow believers. So really hope you guys are encouraged by this message. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Let him guide you. He is the way to um, he is the way to, to have a, a solid, firm foundation that's based on Jesus Christ, because that's the Holy Spirit's whole purpose is to point you to Christ. So if anybody's pointing you away from him, definitely from the devil. That's going to do it for this one. Catch you guys on the next one. Until then, God bless.